I am a cancer patient, I am going to die within some small number of months. We had thought I had hepatitis. And I remember my wife saying pretty soon into this process, well, I guess you'd trade for hepatitis. And I said, honey, I'd trade for AIDS. It's not about how to achieve your dreams. It's about how to lead your life. If you lead your life the right way, the karma will take care of itself. The dreams will come to you. There were some comments on websites uh, where people were talking about why was this guy doing this? And somebody actually inspired me because those were, uh, those were some of his comments more or less. He said, well, you don't get it. Because the question was, you know, this guy has months to live. Why is he going into work and giving a lecture? And somebody said, no, no. He, this wasn't a guy going to work. This was artistic expression. You know, if he were a singer, he would have sung. You know, if he were a painter, he would have painted. But he's a lecturer. And I thought... And so you I, lectured. I, 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 yeah, I never, I never thought of it that way, but that's exactly right. This was how I chose to express myself. You know, I was doing pretty well, and then a couple of weeks ago, the chemotherapy got the best of me, and I got sent into the hospital, and I got diagnosed with congestive heart failure and renal failure, which sounds worse than it is. I said to my doctors, can you get me healthy enough to get to D.C. on Thursday, because it's important. I became sort of an accidental celebrity because after I was diagnosed, and I want to be very clear, I'm a terminal cancer patient. Um, I'm not even supposed to be alive today. In August, I was given three to six months. I've had very fortunate response to the palliative chemo, but this ain't going to last too much longer. This is my family. This is Dylan. He's six years old. He loves dinosaurs. This is Logan. He's four. He's super Logan. He has a cape. He runs around the house saving everyone. This is Chloe. In May, she turns two. And this is my widow. That's not a grammatical construction you get to use every day. I became an accidental celebrity because I gave a lecture at Carnegie Mellon after I was diagnosed. It's an academic tradition of the last lecture. Hypothetically, if you were going to die, what would you tell your students? I got to do it for real. Um, I gave a lecture for my children. My name is Randy Pausch. I'm a 47-year-old father of three. I'm a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. I found out a year and four months ago that I had pancreatic cancer. I am going to die within some small number of months. Facing your own death is something that you can look at in a myriad of ways. And looking at it as an engineering problem, for me, frames it as, you know, I have things I can do that will make a difference, things that will help my wife, things that will help my kids. The more existential side of this, the navel gazing, the oh woe is me, that's not going to help anybody. So for me to frame it as an engineering problem, put the focus on, okay, I may not like this situation, but what can I do with the remaining time to be, you know, make the best outcome I can for everybody that I love? You know, the lecture and the book are they're pretty inadequate substitutes for a living dad, but engineering isn't about optimal solutions, it's about doing the best you can with what you have. And you know, at some point, I'm going to have to go into that night, and that's going to allow me to feel okay about things. Because if you hold yourself to the standard of, well, I did a pretty crappy job compared to what it would have been like to be alive, well, I don't get that choice. The choice I get is, what did I do with the months I had left? I mean, there's so many things that, that you know, I want to say to my family. You know, for the kids, uh, it's important that you guys know uh, that I never gave up, and you guys need to know how much I love you, and uh, how much it saddens me to know that I won't be there. But you need to know that even though I'm not there with you in the moment, that doesn't mean I don't love you. And that doesn't mean that wherever I am, that I'm not looking and watching. And I suspect being incredibly proud. So I think that's enough.